So in this problem, we have three planes, and they all have some sort of charge, so they're emitting uh, an electric field. And um, over here, the field will cancel out to zero. Over here, the field cancels to zero. Um, I already drew in the normals so that we could see the, the, the planes are very, very parallel to each other. And this is the electric field in this region. This is the electric field in that region. And we're asked to figure out what the ratio is between the third and the second um, densities over here of charge. So um, obviously these things in the middle, these planes, they're going to have some kind of charge because they're emitting an electric field. Um, and we really have to just kind of think about what direction that field is pointing so that way we can figure out the charge is positive or negative, right? Because depending on the direction of the charge, if it's positive, then, you know, we know those are, those arrows are going to be pointing outwards. And if it's negative, then we know the arrows uh, is going to be pointing inward like this. So that's going to determine um, how this is going to cancel out, right? So we're going to start with um, assuming that they're all positive, basically, and saying, okay, well, if they're all positive, um, it would be positive, positive, positive. And if, okay, if that's the case, then we could say, all right, on this side, we're going to get a huge positive number, right? So that can't be true. One of these has to be negative. And again, the same thing on this side, we'd get a huge positive number. So at least one of these has to be negative. So let's assume that maybe the first one is negative and let's see how that would um, fix things. Well, if the first one's negative, then we know that the arrows are gonna be pointing uh, towards it on this side. So we're gonna get a big negative there and a big uh, negative maybe on that side. All right, and uh, over here, um, we're also going to have to deal with this one. So if that's positive, then we're going to get this on that side. And uh, also, uh, if this is positive, we're going to get uh, a little bit of that on that side as well. But we know that those are all going to cancel out to zero. Okay, that's fine. Well, what about in the second component here, the second place? In this region, we're going to look at the uh, red one over here. That's going to be pointing to the, this side as well. So we've got a lot of um, a lot of stuff heading to the left here that's causing a big negative. And over here, this one would also be pointing this way. That would make this area negative, but it's not. So we know this can't work. This is not good. E1 is not negative. So we have to try another setup. All right, let's draw it sort of again over here. And this time, let's assume that this one's positive, this one's negative, and this one's positive. All right, so if that was the case, then over here, we get arrows pointing this way. And um, then from this one, we get arrows pointing uh, this direction, right? And then from uh, that one, we'll call this E2. And then from this one, one and uh, this one over here, E3, we're gonna have uh, an arrow pointing this direction. And okay, well, fine. Let's assume that this will properly cancel out to zero. Well, that means that this red must be pretty big, right? And um, all right, fine. So over here, then the red must be a little bit bigger. And this one will be like this, about the same magnitude. And this one over here would probably be a little bit bigger, but it would be pointing in this direction as well. So we're getting a big positive and okay that might work out okay because we would get a positive region in here so that could work and then we're just kind of figuring out okay is that working with this setup all right now the next one this is going to be uh negative here so we would get an arrow pointing this direction it's gonna be pretty big though and then we would also have uh the positive one from this way pointing that way and we also have this one pointing this way so uh, I, th I think we get a pretty big negative here, and so that wouldn't work because this isn't this isn't negative. It's supposed to be a point, which is supposed to be a positive, so uh, that that can't be negative. So in that case, uh, we'll try the third setup. We're gonna go uh, third setup would be if e three was positive, uh, or sorry, e three was negative. So we're gonna go with the negative e three this time. Okay. So we'll go negative, positive, positive, and then um, we'll start with the E1 on this side. And we're going to say, okay, if this was positive, the arrow will be pointing this way, 
And also for E2, oh gosh, uh, for E2, it would be pointing in this way as well. And then also for E3, then it would be going this direction. So, okay, fine. There'd be a big E3, E3 negative going that way. So we can assume that this might actually work out, and that could cancel out to equal zero. Over here, uh, this one is going to be pointing in this direction, and then that arrow is going to be pointing in um, uh, that direction, and this arrow is going to be pointing in this direction, uh, maybe a little bit stronger. So we would get a pretty decent positive number here. Okay, that makes sense. Two big uh, positive arrows. And then over here, we'd have this one pointing in this direction. We'd have the blue one pointing in this direction. And then we also have the negative one pointing in, um, in this direction still. And it'd be a big positive number. So hey, look, this is matching up. It's got 2.8 would, would work here and 8.4 could work there because that's gonna work. And then over here, this is supposed to cancel out to zero. So this would be a pretty big negative going in this direction. And then we would have um, a pretty small positive from there and a pretty uh, reasonable positive from there, but that could work out. That could work out and, and, and these things, could, so that's definitely gonna work. I think this setup with E3 my negative and then those two positives can work out. That means that now we can start <laughs> looking at uh, the equation for E for these things. We wanna figure out uh, uh, why E, well, uh, remember that E is supposed to be equal to, uh, to uh, this charge thing over two epsilon. And that is for a thin sheet. Now it's important to understand that if the sheet was kind of thick like this, then uh, you'd want to start, you'd want to use E equals that uh, over, over epsilon. So that would be for thickness. But if this thin, if this thick, if this thickness was really thin and that thickness didn't matter, um, then you could use an approximation of, uh, of, of two with the epsilon here. Okay. So that's just kind of like, it's just kind of this weird thing that, 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 um, you know the, the thickness is going to cancel out here so like we're gonna we're just gonna use a uh, two epsilon over here and, and over here you need the thickness so you have to um you have to use that and we'll get a different equation so we're trying to use these are super thin sheets so we're going to use this one and that's going to give us this equation all right so um now we can sort of rearrange this and say that uh, um that third thing is supposed to be equal to two epsilon times e3 divided by uh the second one which would be two epsilon and then e2 okay obviously these things are going to cancel out so we don't really need that but we're going to focus on these e's and um all we got to do is just plug in what we have some some numbers over here ah uh, yeah we have to solve for this so on the left side we're going to notice that um well, it would be a positive, uh, sorry, a negative E, um, negative E1, and then a negative E2, and then a positive E3 would give us zero over there on that side. We're supposed to solve for e, E1 here, kind of, because we want to get rid of E1. So we're going to solve for E1. And so we can plug in E1 into the future so that we're just going to be remaining with these two. So let's get rid of E1. And that means we're going to solve for it. So we're going to say that E3 minus E2 equals E1. And that's going to be what we can use for E1 in the future. We can get rid of it and start thinking about E3s and E2s only. Just those two variables. All right. So now from the second location over here, we can gather that uh okay it'd be positive e1 and then minus e2 and then positive e3 i'm just following the arrows of so minus e2 uh plus e1 and then plus e3 is going to give us 2.8 e to the fifth um okay and then uh then we're going to just basically solve for uh we can plug E1 into there. So we'll get that uh, E3 minus E2, that's E1, uh, minus E2 plus E3 is gonna equal to 2.8 E to the five. And then so we can, uh, we can 
get that uh, 2e3 minus 2e2 is equal to 2.8e to the 5. Let's divide out the 2s. So e3 minus e2 is equal to 1.4e to the 5. All right, that's interesting. All right, so this is what we've got so far. We actually figured out that e3 minus e2 is equal to e1, and that e3 minus e2 is actually equal to 1.4. So I, I think that's that's what e1 equals. But let's not worry too much about that. Let's head into the third uh, area, 1, 2, and 3. Let's give me this one. So we'll, we'll say that 8.4 e to the 5 is going to be equal to a positive e2, a positive e1, and a positive e3. And if E1 is supposed to be equal to 1.4 E to the 5, then we can kind of say that uh, um, maybe uh, 7 E to the 5 is going to be equal to um, E2 plus E3. So if E3 is equal to 1.4 E to the 5 plus E to the 2, then that means we can put this in over here and say that 7, uh, kind of line up here, 7 E5 is equal to E2 plus 1.4 E5 plus E2. And that means that we can subtract that over there. So... We're going to get, I think it should be 5.6 e to the 5 equals, um, equals 2, 2 e2. Then we can divide that by 2, and we'll get that 2.8 e to the 5 is equal to e2. Okay. Great, so now we've got E1, we found E2, and we should be able to find E3. E3 is going to be equal to um, 2.8 plus 1.4, so that's going to be 4.2, E to the 5. All right, great, so now we found the three electric fields, and we can just plug it into our equation that we had before, which was supposed to be that... Um, this over that was going to be equal to, and keeping in mind that this electric field is negative, right? Negative, negative three. Okay, cool. Um, and then, and then um, we're going to put that over here. So uh, negative 4.2 e to the 5. Divide that by 2.8 e to the 5. And uh, we should get that it's negative 3 over 2. And that is the correct answer. So um, there we go. Just took a little bit of sort of uh, logical thinking, going through, you know, step by step, uh, figuring out which one was positive and which one was negative in these, uh, in, in which direction the electric field was pointing. That's kind of the most important thing is which direction is the electric field pointing. All right, good stuff.